sure that if the people here would just donate their designer underwear, the trust would meet its target and we could all go home. <laughs> oh, look who just came in. Selena Mazzarell. Oh, she's seen us? Oh. <laughs> Norma! <laughs> Tom! Selena? <laughs> I know what you're thinking, but look at it this way. Frank bought this to Mercurio, who's going out of business. Now his kids will stay at school. You don't have to try to justify it. You know how I feel. I'm Sometimes, just... Norma, you can be very self-righteous. It's nothing to do with being self-righteous. What is it then? Guilt? No, it's about trying to redress the balance that mankind has destroyed. What you know about balance extends to the height of your heels. Wine, madame? I'm just going to have the small spinach salad. Well, then I'll have the baby veal. Baby veal? You cannibal! I'd just like to be reminded where we are on the food chain, you then know? Then you're sick! They torture those little animals. They keep them locked up. They never see the light. Give me a break, Norma. Then eat it somewhere else. No, honey. I'm eating it right here. Then I'm going to vomit. Now that I'd enjoy. No, really, please. Now, you must excuse me for interrupting you, but I, I couldn't help overhearing the two of you discuss balance a moment ago. I was reminded of something from my youth. Oh? Nick, I remember that there was a time when to shoot an animal was an act of conservation. I was with my parents uh, on a world lecture tour. One of my father's old schoolmates had moved out to Africa. He invited us all to stay with him on his coffee plantation in British East Africa, now better known as Kenya. The genius of the restoration. Aids our own resuscitation. Henry, Richard. how are you? Very well. <laughs> May I introduce my wife, Anna? Oh, hello, how do you do? Miss Helen Seymour. How do you do? Welcome. And my son, Henry Jones Jr. Hello. <laughs> well, come in and have some tea. It must be perfect. However, when we arrived, Medlicott informed us that we had been invited to go with him on safari with our ex president, Theodore Roosevelt. No ten-year-old boy at that time could have wished for more. This was a land I'd read about in adventure books, but what I saw was different. I didn't know it then, but I was looking at the Garden of Eden before the fall of man. Henry, Henry, will you slow down? This wilderness has been here for millions of years. It's not going to disappear whilst you unpack. But I want to see Roosevelt. He's the best. A president, a boxer, and a hunter. Yes, and he won't be back till sundown. How do you know? I know. OK, I'll slow down. I fear Mr. Medlicott's boisterous nature is a bad influence on you, Henry. Hello. Oh, Mr. Medlicott. Would you like me to show you around the camp before they return? Yes, sir. Henry, will you slow down or you'll collapse with sunstroke? Don't worry, Miss Seymour. I'll calm him down. Some help, I'm sure. We have some excellent cooks here, you know. Some of President Roosevelt's favorite dishes are elephant trunk soup, ostrich liver, giraffe heart. You'll love it. Mmm. Hello, let me introduce you to Henry Jones, Jr., Professor Jones' son. 
Hello. Pleased to meet you, Mr. Heller. Heller's a taxidermist. He prepares the specimens for transportation back to the United States. The next time you go into a museum and stare at a lion, you can think of me and my blood-stained hands. Something wondrous fed the purest face and the strongest hand. The ground on where I love my love. Is that water clean? Yes, sir. I forgot my robe. Yes, so I see. Thanks. Henry, this is Frederick Salou. He helped plan the safari and is probably one of the best hunters in all of Africa. Good to meet you, Henry. Pleased to meet you, sir. Excuse me. And that's President Roosevelt's son, Kermit. Kermit, are you ready? Yes, Father, all set. Come on in. Professor Jones. It's a fine work. Thank you, sir. I'm glad you enjoyed it. You must read a lot. Not as much as I'd like to. Mr. President? I can only manage... Mr. A... President? Excuse me, Professor Jones. You see, sir, they clearly indicate this as being one of the Burton's Oryx's breeding grounds. There ought to be thousands of them around here. Well, that's quite a mystery, then. Mind you, this was written 20 years ago. I haven't seen any of this yet. Well, they can't have all just died out. They may have migrated north. They favor dry areas. Oh, what a beautiful animal. It's a very rare fringe-eared oryx. And that was a lion, I suppose. Well, at least we're in safe company. No hunter is safe, Miss Seymour. Today, I shot a lioness. Her mate was nearby. I shot the mate. But unfortunately, I only wounded it. We must never underestimate a wounded lion. Remember Johnson? Teddy, surely you don't believe that old story, do you? Believe it? I was there. 
The man was scared out of his wits. He even built a tree house thinking he'd be safe. But the wounded beast came into camp that night and smelt him out. Nothing we could do. Do you know how to shoot a gun, Henry? No, sir. He's only 10 years old. By the time I was 10, I had an intimate knowledge of firearms. Tomorrow, my boy, I'll teach you how to shoot. Target. Squeeze the trigger. Don't pull it. Squeeze it. Well done! Come on. Open the gun and let out the shells. Careful. Good boy. See, you're going to be quite a marksman. Always remember. Gun should only be used in order to survive. Ah, now, this is the best gun ever made. You may not be able to come on the hunt with us, but you should at least be able to enjoy this fine land. Keep them. They're yours. Thank you, sir. You look after him now, Miss Seymour. And you be good. Yes, sir. Wouldn't you just love to go on the hunt, Miss Seymour? I dare say I would. Especially if I had been invited by someone as dashing and brave as Mr. Roosevelt. I dare say you would too, Miss Seymour. Six foot high to the smallest. The royal antelope. Only ten inches. Gosh. Where's the word antelope come from, Henry? Antelopes means brightness of eye. At least that's what it says here. There must be over 80 species. Look, here it is. Wow. It's beautiful. That's a very good likeness. Thanks. This way I'll know for sure if I find it. I'm going to take the binoculars, and I'm going to find it for Mr. Roosevelt and the museum. May I? Very well. But don't go far. I won't. My name is Indy. No. Nope. Indy. Uh-uh. Come on, none. Indy. And T. Indy. 
Indy. In de. Yeah, in de. I, I see that. Petro! Petro! Meadow? Meadow? Indy? Hi! Petro! Binoculars. Field glasses. They're called hippos in America. Is it like, like a toothbrush? Tooth. Tooth. Brush. Toothbrush. Ah. Today.
Gentlemen, ready, please. And... <laughs> Took quite a time to get this one. She charged me. I felt her at a distance of 30 yards. I think she intended mischief. Were you scared? Nope. Excited. These are very rare animals. <laughs> now, with these two, that makes seven we've managed to bag so far. But if they're so rare, why do you kill so many of them? In the grand scheme of things, seven's not many, my boy. There are thousands of them. Beasts such as these belong in a museum for everyone to share. Besides, it's wonderful sport. Here, yeah, yeah. drink to that. <laughs> Understand. You're missing the point, Henry. This is for science. If people are educated, they'll have more respect for wildlife and nature. But why can't you just shoot one or two? Because there are hundreds of museums. But why don't you just put one animal in each museum? That mankind come to understand nature. Very important. I understand your feelings, son. Why, I was given this very gun in recognition of my efforts to preserve the national heritage. I count few achievements higher than the founding of our national parks, where people can come to understand and respect nature. Oh, I guess I see. That's right, Henry. Knowledge is the key. Mankind has the power to destroy the wilderness. That is something we must never be allowed to do. Eternal beginning, the world as it has always been. What do you think happened to the Burton Oryx? Well, I don't know. It's a mystery. I've been thinking about it. And I think I can help you. Well, the Smithsonian needs that animal for its collection. I know I can help you. Good. I can depend on you, eh? Yes, Mr. Roosevelt. I promise. Charge me a nice soil. Congratulations! Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you very much. This must be the uh, wounded mate. I think absolutely certainly. Um, do you know where they are? Enough. Where? Do you know? Yellow. Mugualin. Indi. Oh, my baby. Are you all in
Two hours ago, maybe three. Perhaps he's gone exploring and he's just lost track of the time. This is no place to go missing. Right, we all better start looking for him. I'll search the ridge. Hannah, start looking in the tents. together. Yes, sir. Now, don't you worry, Mrs. Jones. We'll find him. That's right. I'm sure Mr. Roosevelt will find him. The oryx dig it up from the ground and eat it. If we find the root melons, we'll find the oryx. Thank you. Thank you. Meto?
Mnyombo Bwana Indi. Don't you ever, ever do that again. We were worried sick about you. All right? You've caused enough trouble for one day, Henry. I'm disappointed in you. I thought you were more intelligent. But I was looking for Burton's orcs, and I just lost track of the time. No excuses! Professor Jones, I suggest you keep a closer eye on your son in the future. The African bush is no playground. I'm sorry. So you should be. You are going straight to bed. And no supper for you, my lad. Morning, Junior. Morning, Father. Good morning, Henry. I hope you learnt your lesson, Henry. Yes, sir. I have. Excuse me. Anna? 
Nanda, Nanda, Tunimugu, Tunimugu. Hello, Dr. Meadow. No. What is he saying? This is Meadow. He's my friend. He's been helping me. I tried to tell you all yesterday. We found Burton's fringier Dorix. It's the root melon, you see. No, we don't see it, Junior. But they aren't here anymore because they only like this kind of root melon. That's what we call elephants' footballs. <laughs> <laughs> Some of them are huge. Meadow helped me to find them. I promised you I'd find them, and I have. I have it all written down. Here. There was a great fire in the bush which killed all the snakes. These snakes usually ate the mole rats. But the mole rats burrowed underground, and they survived the fire. With no snakes, there got to be so many of them, they ate all the melons. No root melons, no oryx. You see, all the plants and animals are, they're connected. When something happens to one animal, it causes something different to happen to all the other animals. The oryx moved away to find the melons. See, the melons are underground, so the oryx have to dig them up in order to eat them. So what about the oryx? Meadow and I saw them, only a few. They're the most beautiful animals. That's why I lost track of the time. How far did you say? It's in a small gully, somewhere over there. You have a bright lad here, Professor Jones. Simon, saddle up. going to shoot? right too. Absolutely right, Henry. It's a rare species. Who knows what kind of animals might depend on them, eh? Thank you, Henry. Yes, sir. Bully for you.
You know, some years later, they named that place Champagne Ridge. Oh, well, not in memory of Roosevelt, but in memory of the thousands who followed after him. Champagne Ridge. Well, thank you very much for being such pleasant company. But I, I have to go. Goodbye. Goodbye. What was the point of all that? I don't know. Do you? Nope, I don't get it.